In the last few videos, we've been looking at documents and distances between documents. At the beginning of the week, we looked at a very simple system with three features, whether a document had the word sushi or not, whether a document had the word ha Hanover or not, and whether the document had the word origami or not. And from that, from those three features, we built a three-dimensional system so we can measure distances between two documents in these three dimensions. Next, we looked at a structure called the TF-IDF matrix, which lets us calculate how frequent a word is, taking into account how frequent it is in each document and in the entire collection of documents. In this video, we're going to look at a brief example of how we can use the TF-IDF matrix to calculate distances between documents. And we're going to continue working with Shakespeare. In our last video, we were looking at four plays from Shakespeare, two comedies and two tragedies. As You Like It and Twelfth Night are comedies, and Julius Caesar and Henry V are tragedies. You can see the chart on the left. This is about 37 plays from Shakespeare, and you can see that Julius Caesar and Henry V are very close together. Also, Twelfth Night and um, As You Like It are also very close to each other. But these two clusters, the comedy, the two comedies and the two tragedies, are relatively far apart from each other. Let's look at how the math of this would work. Again, here we have the matrix of TF IDF, term frequency, inverse document frequency. Basically, if a number is high, it means that these words are, are relatively frequent in some document and relatively infrequent in the entire collection. If a number is low, it means that the word is fairly common across the documents. If a word is zero, like in the case of good, it means that the word happens in every document, and therefore we cannot use it to tell any two documents apart. So we have this matrix, and each of the columns is a vector with four values. Each of those values will be the value for the feature, frequency of the word battle, frequency of the word good, frequency of the word fool, and frequency of the word wit, with the calculations that we performed. You can think of each of those as a dimension. So we would have a four-dimensional space where we could measure the distance between any two objects in these four dimensions. There's many ways of measuring distance, but let's use a very simple one, a kind of Euclidean distance, where in order for us to calculate the separation between two objects, we take the value uh, for battle, for example, and subtract the value for battle in Julius Caesar and Henry V. So 0 0.22 minus 0 0.28. This is how separated these two objects are in the dimension of battle. We're going to repeat that 0 minus 0, 0 0.0036 minus 0 0.0083, and 0 0.018, 0 0.022 for the other three dimensions. So we want to figure out how separated these two objects are in the battle dimension, in the good dimension, in the full dimension, and in the wit dimension. We have those subtractions and then we square it to make sure that everything has a positive sign. And then we get the square root. So the result of this equation here is the square root of 0 0.0036, which is 0 0.06. This is the distance between Julius Caesar and Henry V using a system with four features, battle, good, full, and wit. If we calculate it for a few more pairs, we'll see that the distance between Julius Caesar and Henry V is 0 0.06. This is the distance between the two tragedies. The distance between the two comedies, as you like it in Twelfth Night, is 0 0.07. So the tragedies are very close together, the comedies are very close together. But the distance between one of the tragedies, Julius Caesar, and one of the comedies, Twelfth Night, is three times as large, 0 0.22. So the tragedies are close together, the comedies are close together, but the, 
comedies and the tragedies are relatively far apart. We could use this to start our clustering. For example, we could choose two plays that have very short distance between themselves and pair them. We could have another pair of plays that have very short distance between them and lock them and pair them. Now we could look for pairs that have short distances between them and join them into another branch of the tree. And then continue to look for pairs that have short distances between them. Then look for structures that have short distances between them. And doing so, we'll continue to build an entire tree as we do here, where branches that are on opposite sides are relatively far apart in distance, as measured by a TF-IDF matrix. In summary, we can use features to measure the distance between two documents, be it in three dimensions, be it in four dimensions, or in any other, in any number of dimensions that we want. We can have an arbitrarily large number of features or dimensions, but this is going to become a problem if it's too large, and we're going to be dealing with this in subsequent videos and weeks. But for now, um, when we have a system of features, we can calculate distances between documents. And when we do this, documents that are very close together are going to start to cluster, and documents that are very far apart are going to be in separate clusters. And uh, in subsequent videos, we're going to look at one specific example of a clustering algorithm called k-means.